Hello everyone, this is Elijah with the Rideshare Guy, and in this video, we're going to be going through a tutorial of the Grubhub customer app. So for all of y'all that are looking to place an order with Grubhub, you'll know exactly how to do that by the end of this video, and you will also find out anything else you need to know about the customer app. So let's go ahead and get into it. So the first thing that you'll want to do before you do anything else is you'll need to download the actual customer app. So you want to go to the Play Store or the App Store, depending on if you have an iPhone or Android and type in the words Grubhub customer app. Once you do that, the customer app will appear and you'll notice the customer app because it should have a red icon with the word Grubhub on it. Keep in mind that this is different from the Grubhub driver app. You wanna make sure you download the Grubhub customer app. Once you get to that screen, you wanna go ahead and download the app and have it be installed. Once it is installed, you want to open the app and then you'll be prompted to either create a Grubhub account or you can sign in using a Facebook account or a Google account. If you want to make a Grubhub account, you'll need an email address and you'll need to think of a password. And in all instances, you will also need a phone number. Once you have that set up, you're clear to start ordering using the customer app. Once you've logged into Grubhub, you'll now be on this screen and this is the home screen. So before we cover exactly how to order so you can chow down, we do want to cover exactly what these icons are on the screen so you'll know how to operate the customer app on Grubhub. So the first thing you want to do is add an address on Grubhub so that your driver can bring the food to the right place. To do this, you want to click on the search icon at the top of the screen and right below it is going to have the option to add an address. If you've already ordered using Grubhub before, it's going to have your previous address right underneath here. But if you haven't, it's going to have the option to add an address or it's going to ask you if you want to use your current location as the address. From personal experience, I always say it's more smoother to add the address because sometimes it may not exactly triangulate your position and it might get your neighbor's address. You don't want your neighbor to get some free food on your behalf, right? So it's probably easier to just go ahead and type in your address. And since we're on the search bar, we can also cover exactly how it works. So you see a variety of different food types right underneath the search bar. You can click on any of those and it'll give you a variety of options that are close to you based on that food type. So if I click on American, it's gonna show a host of restaurants that fall under the American category. What that is is up to individual interpretation, I suppose. So when ordering through Grubhub, you have basically two functions that you can utilize. The first is to have food delivered to you. This is when a driver is going to go and pick up the order from their restaurant and bring it to you. The second function is to actually do what's known as a pickup. The pickup option is where you place the order, then you go and pick the food up. The process for both is fairly similar, so I'll be focusing on the delivery aspect for the duration of this video, but keep in mind that the process is pretty much the same, with the only exception being that you'll go pick the food up. But inside the app, it visually looks the same. You can filter out what restaurants do delivery versus doing pickup by clicking on the pickup icon in the top right hand corner or the delivery icon in the top left hand corner. This alters the view of the app so that you only see restaurants that do that particular function. Of course, if you want to see both, then you can just leave it as it is. So I've clicked on the delivery option because I don't want to go pick something up. And if you click on the delivery option, you're going to see a sort button right next to it. Let's click on sort. And what that does is it allows you to change the view in which you're seeing restaurants. So we see you can sort by delivery fee, rating, recommended, fastest. We're going to sort based on the fastest just to see what happens. And the restaurants are now categorized based on which ones are closest and which ones will give me my food the fastest. If you keep scrolling to the right, you'll see an option that says pre-order. You can actually order food up to four days in advance by using this pre-order function. All you gotta do is pick the time and day that you want this order to actually happen. Then when you pick out the food that you want and actually place the order, the order won't actually go out until the day that you've designated right here, which is pretty cool. A shortened version of that is basically you can schedule a delivery using this function. Next, we're gonna go over the icons you see at the bottom of the screen. Right now we're on the home tab and we're gonna click on the perks tab to see what it has to offer. This is the place where you can find good deals and discounts that are going on in your area. So let's take a look at what we have. We have Jack in the Box, free delivery, free delivery for a church's chicken, discount for Studio Movie Grill. So it's a good habit to check this section before you actually place the order 
because you may have a discount that you can use and if you didn't check before ordering, you may lose out on a discount. Next, we have the orders tab. The orders tab is a place where it shows a list of orders that you've ordered before using Grubhub. This is a convenient way that you can reorder something you've ordered in the past without having to go and select all the items again. And last but not least, we have the account tab. The account tab is a place where you can update any information in your account that needs updating, like your email, password, your payment information, or if you want to add another address, phone number, or manage your notifications within the Grubhub app. You can even give someone a gift card or redeem a gift card if you have one in this section. And now for my favorite part, we're going to find out how to place an order using Grubhub, and I'm going to order an Impossible Burger from my favorite bar. Each restaurant that you see in the app has its own rating and designated time frame that's going to be estimated to get you the food. As we see on this Sonic Drive, this would take 30 to 40 minutes to get here, and they have a 3.5 rating. Now keep in mind the estimated time frame is exactly that. It's an estimated time frame. There are factors that can affect it, such as driver demand, as well as weather conditions. So keep in mind it's just an estimate and it is subject to change. So I could scroll through all these restaurants and try and find the bar I'm talking about, but a faster way is just to type it in in the search bar. So I'm going to type in Bar Luis, and there it is. I'm gonna click on it, and from here, I'm gonna look for the Impossible Burger. So I'm gonna scroll, go to the burger section, there it is, the Impossible Burger. I'm gonna click on it, and from here, I'm given a few options as far as what do I want with the burger. So the way Grubhub works is, you select your sides, and then you put any special instructions that you need at the bottom. So let's go through that process now. So ask them what side do I want. I want french fries. Scrolling down, and it has what's known as optional choices. This is gonna vary depending on every restaurant, but it's just a way that you can customize your order based on uh, some things that customers do on a regular basis. So let's ask in, would you prefer a protein substitute? No, I do not. Would you like to modify this item? And in this case, it's asking me, is there something I don't want on there that comes with it? And there is. I don't want any garlic alioli, if that's how you pronounce that. And at the bottom, it has special instructions. So if you have something that you want to tell the restaurant to omit or to add, then this is the place where you can put it. For me, I don't want any cheese on it. So I'm going to say, please omit cheese. And then I'm going to add this to the bag. Now that it's been added to the bag, I'm going to click on view order. Let's say if there was something else I wanted to add to my meal, I can click on add items. And it takes me back to the uh, selection within the restaurant itself. So I can pick something and add that. I don't want to add any items. I just wanted to show y'all exactly how that works. So I'm going to go back. If for some reason you want to start your order over and you want to get rid of everything that's in your bag, just click on empty bag and this will get rid of everything and it'll start the process over. Now let's briefly cover these fees. The delivery fee is how much it's going to cost for the Grubhub driver to deliver the food to you. So if you were picking the food up, this delivery fee would actually be omitted. Taxes is pretty much self-explanatory and the service fee helps Grubhub cover their operating costs. Towards the bottom is a place where you can leave your driver a tip. It's based on a percentage system, but if you want, you can also click on custom and add a flat tip. So let's say instead of 20%, I want to add a flat $6. Click update tip, then boom, it's updated. Tips are very much appreciated. And as a delivery driver myself, I can honestly say it helps to motivate us to keep delivering food for people. Once you're ready, you click on proceed to checkout. And then it takes you to this page. Under your information, it's going to have a deliver to then it's going to have the address that you have on file. If for some reason you want to deliver it to another address, you want to click on the edit button and put in a new address that you want your food delivered to. This time around, you have the option to pick what's known as a contactless free delivery. What that means is you won't have any contact with your driver in terms of them handing it to you. So if you select that option, your driver is going to leave the food in a designated place. You'll need to let your driver know what that designated place is. So you want to click on the drop off location and then pick which one that is applicable to you. So we have front door or my house. This is where you want the driver to leave your order. So at the front door of the house or apartment, outside my building door, in my building lobby, I'll specify in the notes section. 
So be sure to pick which one is uh, applicable based on this situation. And if you are going to leave some details in the notes section, that's right underneath the drop off location. So it says notes for the driver. So I put, please leave order on the chair on the porch. So the driver knows that once they get there, they can just leave the food on the chair on the porch. Lastly, you need to add your payment details if you haven't already using the account tab. You can add a debit card or pay using PayPal or Google Pay. If you have a gift card or promo code to use, here's a place we want to put it in. If it's a gift card, click on gift card. And if it's a promo code, click on enter code and put the information in. Now that that's out of the way, I'm going to pay for it using my Google Pay account and we're going to move on to the next step. The order has now been placed and the process has started. The Grubhub app will let you know exactly what phase you are in as far as the delivery goes. For instance, on this screen, you're going to see your delivery driver, the estimated time it's supposed to get there for you, and the phase that your order is currently in. So right now it's in the works and that means that the restaurant is currently cooking my order. If at any point you need to contact your Grubhub driver, you can press the call icon or the message icon. If for some reason you need help from Grubhub directly, you can click on the help icon in the top right hand corner. Once the order has been prepared and your driver has officially picked up the food and is heading your way, the phase will change and it will say on the way. It's at this point you can go ahead and let your mouth water because you're going to soon have food in it. Once your driver has dropped off your order, Grubhub will ask you to rate your experience. Now whether you do this before or after you start chowing down is up to you. Me personally, I always end up chowing down on this burger you see on the screen here first, and then I come back to it. But regardless of when you do it, it's going to ask you a few questions, and it's also going to ask you to rate your overall experience with Grubhub. And there you have it. We've done a tutorial of the Grubhub customer app, as well as shown how to exactly place an order and get that food in your stomach. That does it for this video. If you have any other questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. Here at the Rideshare Guy, we publish new videos every single week. So be sure to subscribe if you're new, if you want more videos from us, and give the video a like as it's very much appreciated. It helps us out with YouTube algorithm. And if you want to see more customer delivery app tutorials, you might want to check out our tutorials on DoorDash, Uber Eats, and Postmates. I will catch you in the next video. Be safe and profitable, everyone.